Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a pen tablet. I'm using the Wacom pen tablet for this tutorial uh, using GIMP. And so right now I have my tablet installed on my computer. I have the driver installed, but I haven't done anything in GIMP yet. So I'm just going to show you guys step by step how to set this up from scratch. But before I get into that, of course, I want to direct you guys over to my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. As always, we've got tons of video and text tutorials on here, so check those out. You can also check out our online GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. I'll include a link to that in the description as well as links to our social media. And there are no downloads for this tutorial today because I am just doing a setup tutorial for those of you that have a tablet or are planning on getting one. But let's go ahead and dive into that. And by the way, you'll see here, it says I'm using the unstable development version. This is GIMP 2.9.8. It's the version before the 2.10 that's coming out any day now. And they're working on bug fixes with this version before they come out with the newest stable version. But uh, this does contain a lot of the new features that the brand new GIMP 2.10 is gonna have. And of course, I'll include a link to download that in the description. But you can basically follow along with GIMP 2.8.22 or another version of GIMP. A lot of the steps will be very similar, if not the same. So what I want to do first is tell GIMP that there's an external device that I want to use with it. And so to do that, I have to open my input devices dialog box. There's two ways I can get to it. I can just go directly to edit input devices, or if you don't see that, you can go to edit preferences. And that'll open up this dialog box. And then you can go to input devices and then configure extended input devices. And that'll take you to the same window as it would if you just went directly to edit input devices. And real quick, before I set this up, I just want to show you, I do have my brush tool selected already. And you can see all the options here with the brush tool. Down here, there's something called dynamics and we're going to get into that in a second. But I just wanted you guys to recognize that dynamics is always here, but it only works really when you have a tablet set up with it. Anyway, moving on to configuring the input devices. Right now it's set to core pointer and that just means basically your mouse is the default setup here. And if you haven't installed the Wacom tablet yet or you've installed it but you haven't restarted your computer, this won't display. So make sure you install the device, install the driver, restart your computer and then open up GIMP and then this will show up. You should only have to open GIMP once. I've seen other tutorials where you have to close it down and then open it again but you should only have to open it once if you install the tablet first and then go into this process. So I'm gonna come over here to Wacom Tablet Eraser and I'm gonna set the mode of this to screen and I'm gonna do the same thing with the Wacom Tablet Pressure Stylus. So I'm just gonna set this to screen and this is gonna set up the pen portion um, and this is the eraser portion and so basically the way the pens work with the styluses or with the tablets is that when you flip them upside down they act as an eraser. But we do have to set that up first for that to work. So I'll go ahead and hit save and that should save our settings then I'll hit close and then I'll just click OK here. And so now I'll go to File New and I'm using my tablet right now and I'm just gonna change this to a smaller size And so now I've uh, grabbed my paintbrush tool here with the tablet and I'm just painting on here. And now what you'll see is it just looks like I'm using my mouse. You can't really tell there's a difference here. I'm gonna hit Control Z. Now if I come over here to Dynamics, I can change the type of dynamics on here and the most popular I've seen is Pressure Opacity. And what that does is the less pressure you apply, the more transparent it is. And then the more pressure you apply, the uh, less transparent it is, so the more opaque it is. And I'll just test this out. So you guys can see that pressure sensitivity already working on the pen tablet. Now if I flip my pen upside down, it should automatically go to the eraser, but it doesn't. Right now, for some reason, it's going to the crop tool. Uh, but I'm going to click on my eraser with, the, uh, with my pen upside down here, and then erase. And you'll see that this is erasing like a normal eraser would. And then I'll flip it back over and it should flip and show my brush, which it does. So um, this is already working here. If it doesn't, you can just flip it over, click on your brush tool, and it should register that this is the option you want when you flip your pen back over the right way up. So I'll flip back to the eraser and see what happens. And so now it's selecting my eraser tool. And you can also change the brush of your eraser tool if you want to use a different brush. You can change the size. You can also come over to the dynamics options and you can add jitter, smooth the stroke, um, work on all these options here. And of course you can always work on your uh, dynamics options. So right now for the eraser, 
the dynamics are set to off, so there's not really going to be any kind of effect applied to this, which is actually what I want. And when I flip it back over, you'll see that my dynamic setting for my pen or my uh, paintbrush, I should say, comes back on. So you can go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and Device Status. And mine docked over here, yours might dock over here. Uh, but with this being a dockable dialog, it means you can uh, move it. So I'm just going to move this over here. And I am still using my tablet. And you can see the different brushes that are selected for your pen or your stylus. And then this is what's selected for the eraser. So if I flip over to the eraser, you'll see it switches over. And I can flip it and it'll switch back. And then you can choose if you're painting with a brush or a gradient or a pattern here. And you can always come down here to patterns and change your pattern or come to brush and change your brush. But I'm not going to get too much into that. You can also come over to Windows, Dockable Dialog, and come over to Paint Dynamics. And this is going to give you the same menu that would show up if you were... I'm going to come back over here to my tool options. If you were on your tool options for your brush, down here where we just were, there's the dynamics option here with your drop down. So this is going to give you those same options. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can kind of cycle through these without having to come down here into the corner. And so I'll go to my pressure opacity and that was the one we were using just a second ago. And if I click this icon here or if I right click and by the way there's a, a little button on the side of my pen here that allows me to right click. But if I right click and go to edit dynamics I can see the matrix map or the mapping matrix here and that just shows you uh, what different features are coming into play here with the settings. And you can't change any of the default brushes here, but what you can do is you can come over and you can create a brand new brush and choose whatever um, options you want for your brush here. So I'll just choose some random options. And then you'll see that when I'm drawing, it's going to apply those new random options. I didn't really select anything in particular. But let's say that I really like this brush and I wanted to go ahead and save it. I can come up here and change the name to Custom Brush 1. And then when I come over here back to my uh, Brush Dynamics dockable dialog, you'll see Custom Brush 1 shows up here. And then you'll see that it also shows up down here That I, now that I've named it. If it doesn't show up down here, you can click this refresh icon and that should refresh the new brush dynamic that you created. So my tablet has a variety of keys on the left side that you can customize to be express keys or shortcut keys within GIMP. I've noticed in uh, the little bit of testing that I've done that some of the shortcut keys don't really work in uh, either GIMP 2.9.8 or GIMP 2.8.22, and there are some that do work. So for example, um, I have something here called a touch ring, and if I go to brush size, this does appear to work. So when I uh, circle my finger, finger around the ring, it does increase or decrease the size of my brush, and that's pretty useful. But uh, I haven't gotten any of these other ones to work properly yet, so that's something that I'll have to mess around with a little bit more. There are some key modifiers as well on here, and those seem to all work pretty well. Uh, for instance, one of the buttons on here works as a shift. You can see it's probably cut off a little bit here, but uh, you can see there's shift, control, alt, pan, scroll. And this also tells you what all of your buttons are currently, um, just by holding any of these buttons here. And you can also hold multiple buttons at the same time. So if I wanted to do multiple uh, key modifiers, which does um, produce different results in GIMP, I can hold two of the keys. So for instance, right now I'm holding uh, shift control. But if you want to adjust your settings, you can just go ahead and open up the Wacom Desktop Center if you're using a newer Wacom tablet. Or you can do it directly from the tablet itself by holding the settings key. Uh, so right here you'll see it's displaying my settings key is the second button down. And then I can come over to express key properties or pen properties or touch properties. And uh, that will open up the tablet properties here. Um, but you've also got it in here in the Wacom Desktop Center. So either way, when you go to open up the settings, in this case I'll open up my Express Key settings, and you'll see this looks the same as uh, what I just opened up. What you'll see here is you've got your device, and you've got the various tools that you can adjust, and then you've got the application you can adjust it for. So right now it's just set so that my Express Keys are the same across the board for all of my applications on my computer. And if I wanted to make it so that I have certain settings just for GIMP. I can come over here and click the plus key 
and I can come over here to GIMP 2.9 or you can browse on your computer for the program. If you don't see it here, it's usually in a folder like this, Program Files, GIMP, Bin, and then you'll see the executable file in there. It's usually just called GIMP-2.9 and then there is the uh, GIMP logo on there, the Wilbur logo. And so that's usually the executable file. So then you click OK and that's going to add your application on here. And then you can come in here and you can adjust your express key so you can change any of these by clicking on the drop down and selecting from any of these options here and they all uh, do different things and I'm not going to go into that now too much and I'm also not going to go into customizing this too much because you guys might be using a different tablet but just know that you can come in here and you can add your application in here and go ahead and customize your express keys for that particular application in our case for GIMP and then you've also got the touch ring here and again, I haven't had too much success yet, but you can come in here and adjust your touch, touch ring settings. And then you've also got some on-screen controls here. Basically what these do is there's like a menu that pops up for whatever control you have set. So for example, real quick, I'll just change this to um, from pan and scroll. I'll come over to on-screen controls and choose brush tools. If I come into GIMP and now press that bottom uh, button you'll see that I now have a brush tools on screen panel here and I can increase my brush size decrease it and uh, there's layer blend on here and I can add options to this on screen menu so exit out of that and if you do change the settings and then you realize that you don't like the settings and you want to go back to the default just hit this default and it'll revert back to your default settings alright guys that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed it if you did Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials or enroll in our GIMP photo editing course on Udemy. And of course, I'll include that link along with the links to our social media in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.